So this is going to serve as a key and explanations to topographic maps practice number one. Now, this is a little more challenging than some of our other things. So I'm going to take the time to go through each one of these and the explanations very carefully. I won't normally do this. The second practice you'll have today, I will just post an answer key to. But I want to walk you through this to make sure everybody understands how to read these types of maps. If this is easy to you, great. You can watch this at a faster speed or kind of skim around. But don't kid yourself. You need to pay close attention to be able to understand how to read these maps as I walk you through the process. First of all, we've got this topographic map here. Remember that these lines represent a certain elevation. And some of these lines have a number on them. They're called index contour lines because that's a line that has the actual number on there. Like this line has an elevation of 800. Everything along that line is 800 feet in elevation. The interval between each line is 25 feet. So I got a line here that's 700. That means the next line is 725, 750, 775, up to 800. So now we can use this to try to kind of gauge or measure, just like with lines on a ruler, what the elevation is for these points. So let's look at A. A is right on this line, and that's the line for 800. So there's no question A's elevation is 800. We'll find B. B is right here, and B is on this line for 900. No question about that. Now we get to C. C is between two lines. Well, what lines are it between? Is it between? Well, that's the 700. That's the 725. That's the 750. It's not on a line. I know it's more than 725 and less than 750. So let's pick a number that falls between those. I'm thinking, man, it looks a little bit closer to the 725 line than the 750 to me. So I might say that C is 730. If you sit at 735, if you sit at 740, that's okay. So long as it's some number between 725 and 750. We go over here to D. D is right on this line, but that line doesn't have a number on it. Well, let's find the line that has a number. That's the 800 line. That would be the 825. That's going to be the 850 line. Going for E. E is right on this line here. Well, that's the 800 line, so that must be the 825 line. F, F is right on this line here. That's the 900, 925, F is on the 950 line. G, G once again is between a couple of lines. If that's the 900, the next lower line must be the 875. So it's somewhere between 875 and 900. To me, it looks kind of be right in the middle. So I might pick something like 880. Any number between 875 and 900 would be okay. At which point is there a place where the land is steep? Okay, steep, I'm thinking it's right in here would be a good place where the land is steep. And that's because these lines are closer together. When the lines are closer together, it means you're going up, 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 up in a very short distance. That's what it means to have steep land. So where lines are close together, that's where the land is steep. So which point on the map is a place where the land is flat? I'm looking at G. Notice that G is in an area where there aren't any lines. That's a big area where there's not much change in elevation. It's not going up, up, up. It's all staying the same, which means that it's flat. So we'll go to the second practice. What's the elevation of the lines of, of the points shown on this map? So let's find A. A's right here. I got, a, I got a scale that tells me each line represents 100 feet on this map. And I see I've got some index contours. That's 3,000, 3,500. Those are the only two lines. So, go into A. It looks like it's going uphill this way because that's 3,000, 3,500. This is 3,500. That must be 3,600. That's 37. Well, A is between 36 and 3,700. I'm going to say it's about halfway between. All right. I'll say about 3,650. B, well, here's B. 
This is the line for 3,500. I'm going to count down. So 35 to 34 to 3,300. So somewhere between 34 and 3,300. Let's say 3,350. Looks about halfway between to me. C is right, either right on this line or right below that line. That's 35, 34, 33, 3,200. But to me, it looks a little bit below it. So I might say 3,195. Like it's just below that line for 3,200. D is between two lines again. That's 35. That's 34. That's 33. But I think it looks a little bit closer to the 3,400 line than the 33. So I might say 3,375. E is right on the line for 3,000, 31, 3,200. And F is right on this line. That's 3,000, 29, 28, 2,700. Now, the ones that you're in between lines and we're estimating, your estimate can be a little different so long as we're in the same range. True or false, the land is steeper at C than D. So I'm trying to find C and I see how close these lines are. And we go to D. Looks like in D, those lines are pretty far apart. And at C, the lines are closer together. So that is true. The highest point on this map is A of the letters. Okay, and we can actually go back up here at 3650. That's the biggest number. That's true. Now, in a theoretical sense, is there any place on this map that is higher than A? Well, A was 3650. That would have been 37, 38, 39. So had there been a letter anywhere in this range here, it would have been the higher point. But as far as the letters, A is the highest letter on the map. If you were standing here at B and you, you could see your friend at D, okay? Now this gets a little tricky here at B. If you're looking this direction towards D, well, what's the land like? Land goes up one, up another, kind of up another before it starts going down to D. So you've got some higher ground between B and D. So if you were standing here at B, over here would be D. Could you see D? The answer is no, because you can't see through a hill. All you would see would be up to the top. Now the contour interval of this map here, this time I didn't give it to you like I did here and here. We gotta figure it out. So I've got some numbers, 4,000 and 4,500. So I got a change of 500 between the contour interval, the index contour. Well, it goes up one, two, three, four. That's five steps up. There are five lines that equals 500 feet up. So that means each line must be 100. Now we can figure out the elevations. So A, now I want to point out, notice how this line is extra dark. This line here is extra dark, but they're not connected because this is just a small snapshot. I'm guessing that in real life, the line does something like that. We can't see it, but I know that's the extra dark line, so it must be the 4,000 line. If each line is 100, you go up a line, that's 4,100. For B, he is also 4,100 because here's the 4,000. It goes up one line, 4,100. C, well, that's 4,500. That's 46. Well, that's 47. So C is somewhere between 46 and 47. I'll go 4,650. Seems to be about halfway to me. Let's go to D. Well, now, I don't have a number over down here. Well, I don't have a line with a number down here, so I'm going to count from this one. It's 45, 44, 43. That's 42. So it's somewhere between 42 and 43. I'm thinking it's a little bit closer to the 43, so I'm going to say something like 42, 75. You can say something a little bit different for that answer because we're estimating. 
and we can estimate differently. It just has to be a number between 42 and 43. For E, he's over here. If that's 4,000, it's 39. It must be 3,800. F, F is just below the line for 45, but it's above the line for 44. I'm going to say it's about halfway, about 4450. And finally, G, right here, G is right on the line. Which line is it on? It's on the line for 4100. True or false, the highest point on this map could be at an elevation of 4900. Well, First of all, let's figure out where the highest point would be. If this is 45, 46, 47, so anything in this area here is above 4,700. And you know, 4,900, that's higher than 4,700. But remember, you got to have a line for each 100. So we're at 47 here. We never hit 4,800 because there'd have to be another line. So that means the highest point on this map cannot be 4,900. It'd have to be 47 up to 48. It could be 4,799, but we know it's not 4,800 because there's not another line there. Now, let's imagine that we walk up this hill two different ways. First of all, we're going to walk from A to C. From A to C. And the second, we're going to go from G to C. Which path is steeper? Well, they both actually start at the same elevation because A and G are on the same line. And they wind up at the same point, but the path is not the same. The path from A to C is steeper. And how do we know that? Because A to C crosses those lines, does those steps very quickly, goes up very fast. So that means steep. You go from G to C, the lines are more spread out, which means the land's a little bit flatter. Now, if you were standing at B, I'm standing right over here at B, and I'm looking around, which point could I not see? Well, I can look straight downhill and see E. C over here is on the same line as I'm on. I can see him. There's nothing in between. I'm looking uphill at D, looking uphill at F, I'm looking uphill at C. What about A? This path, as I look, I'm looking uphill, and then I'd have to look downhill. So from B to A, I can't see each other because I've got a, a high point. I've got a hill in the middle. So the point I cannot see is A because it's got a hill like that in the middle. Now imagine on the other hand, we're at A. Do you see C as being higher or lower than you? Well, each line is going up in elevation. So as I look at C, I am looking uphill. As I would physically see somebody standing in the C, my head is looking up because they're higher in elevation than I am. Now let's match the topographic map to the correct mountain. Remember, these are called profile views, or how we see it from the side. This is a way to describe what the elevation looks like from the top. So looks like this one here. It's like, oh, it's got it's really steep over here on the right side, kind of flat over here. And it's got like a, a kind of like a, a, a flat high point and then kind of a pointy high point. This one matches that guy right there. You can see that it's really steep on this side. And it's kind of flatter on this side. It's got like a little hill there, right there. Now this one here, this one seems to be about the same on both sides and comes to an, a nice point, high point right in the middle. That's that guy. Finally, this guy here seems like it's kind of flat here in the middle. It goes up, goes up, goes up, goes up. So this is a landform that's got two points to it. Be that guy right there. Okay, so once you feel comfortable with this and you feel like you can um, now apply this knowledge for yourself, uh, come see me for topographic map practice number two.